Art Nouveau is a style that was popular in Western art between 1890 and 1910. But its history, its influences are as complex as its characteristic sinuous lines that often intertwine with one another to form organic vivid patterns. So in order to understand Art Nouveau, one might have to go back about a century earlier. At the turn of 1800s in Europe, Neoclassicism was the most popular style of painting. Known by some as a recycled form of classicism, the artworks were, begin quotes, entirely smooth and utterly devoid of any brush strokes. Figures were easily distinguishable from shadow and were characteristically well lit, and the focal points of the paintings were made very clear to the viewer. End quotes. The artists often looked to the past for the subject matter and inspiration. But by the 1850s, it was a time of profound change. Various wars and civil wars were being fought, and slavery was eventually abolished. The industrial revolutions were leading to mass urbanization. New inventions like the motor cars, steam engine completely changed the way people travel, while radios and telephones changed communication. Other inventions like the gramophone, moving pictures, photography, sewing machines, electricity, and the light bulb transformed daily lives. These inventions also meant that art could now be mass produced. The way art was consumed was also rapidly changing. The opening of the first public museums meant high art became more and more accessible to the larger public. Leading 19th century theoreticians such as French Gothic Revival architect Eugene Emmanuel Violet Le Doux and British art critic John Ruskin began to question the hierarchy between fine art and the so called lesser decorative art. Artists like Monet and the Impressionists began to break away from the past by painting subjects and events that were immediately around them. When asked to include angels in a painting for a church, Gustave Courbet has said to have replied, I have never seen angel. Show me an angel and I will paint one. By the second half of the century, art had started to become more autonomous. That is, artists had a higher degree of control regarding what and when to make. While machines and new inventions helped individuals and small businesses, Capitalism inevitably favored the larger enterprises. This led to a concern over artistic values. In response to this, arts and craft movement began around the 1880s in Britain. Chief influencer William Morris passionately believed in creating beautiful objects that could be used in everyday lives, and he believed the way to do this was to go back to the more intimate process of craft making through workshops and individual makers. He believed that it had the potential to change people's lives. Do you make a lot of things for yourself at home? Yes, I do. Um, Can you imagine work for yourself not involving a creative element? No. No, I couldn't. It seems there's often less and less space in the world for craftsmen. It seems to be, doesn't it, with um, automation and everything? I suppose with automation you are advancing, you know, you are um, improving things, but uh, the handcrafts are going because of that. But what's the loss involved? Uh, I don't really know. Um, what's the loss for you personally? Satisfaction of, uh, of a hand, handmade job or a hand-finished job. I wouldn't like to work in uh, in automation or uh, computerised industry. This is quieter. Whether it changed lives or not, it definitely did inspire. In Munich, 1892, artists broke away from their establishment to form Munich Secession. They went on to start the highly influential journal Jugend in 1896 a platform to promote new cultural renaissance without going back to establish vintage art. In Austria, the Secessionists, a group of Vienna-based painters, sculptors and architects who broke away from the city's art establishment, wanted to, begin quotes, reunite the fine and applied arts and to use handmade goods to help rescue Austrian society from what they saw as the moral decay of industrialization, end quotes. And similarly, in Belgium, there was L'Art Modern, a journal for all avant-garde tendencies within Belgian art, literature and music. It quotes Edmund Picard in one of his speeches, Our dominant idea is that of emancipation, 
We represent new art with its absolute freedom of looks and trends with its modern character. We want free art, that's why we will fight against those who want it as a slave. New art or Art Nouveau Elsewhere in Europe, Scottish architect and designer Charles René Mackintosh began combining the organic and practical characteristics of arts and crafts design with the creative freedom of Art Nouveau. In Spain, Catalan culture was experiencing its own rebirth, seen today as part of the modernism movement. This was expressed through architects like Gaudi and Dominic e. Montaner through the imaginative style of Art Nouveau. In France 1895, a Parisian art dealer named Siegfried Samuel Bing opened a gallery called La Nouveau, where he exhibited various works by Art Nouveau artists from all over Europe. He is often credited to have popularized the name Art Nouveau. Not long after, the movement reached its peak at the 1900 Exposition Universelle.